the agenda for today, uh, we will go for eight points. First, we will talk about what is uh, Oracle Apex and what is it's used for. Then we'll uh, understand what is the architecture uh, for the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Platform and uh, going through the main characteristics and the, the main benefits for uh, Oracle Apex uh, from business perspective and from development perspective. Then we will go for a demo for uh, demonstrate how to build the application from a spreadsheet using Oracle Apex. Then we'll providing documentation, then we'll go for Q&A. First, we are talking about Oracle Apex. Uh, Oracle Apex is um, it's a development framework uh, that enable uh, different types of users, such as software developers and business analysts, to fast design and develop different types of application according to their business requirement. So when we are talking about Oracle Apex, we can see that Oracle Apex, Apex enable different types of users to, to develop different types of application, such as desktop application for on-premise application, uh, also can develop web applications uh, for, for cloud, also can develop mobile applications for, uh, for Oracle database. So the main uh, power functionality for, uh, for Oracle Apex, it's quickly enable the business users to quickly develop reports and the graphs and calendar forms automatically on top of the data itself. No need to develop everything manual. So this is one of the, this is uh, what is Oracle Apex uh, support in development lifecycle. <clears throat> Second, we are going to talk about what is it used for. Uh, Oracle Apex uh, is a development framework that is uh, suitable for different types of business. So we can use Oracle Apex in banking application, insurance applications, pharmaceuticals. Uh, it's, it's a very powerful framework that can translate the business requirement uh, very well. So it can adapt with the changes for any types of business. Also, we, uh, Oracle Apex as a framework is, is very suitable for different types of organization size. So it's suitable for the small organization, medium sized organization, even for the uh, very large organizations. So Oracle Apex uh, is used mainly to, to solve uh, the business problem, uh, to, to remove all spreadsheet inside the organization and uh, automatically build this application rapidly, very fast, building all the required forms, building all the required reports uh, for all types of organization with no coding skills required. So this is the main powerful feature for uh, Abex that it's, it, anyone can use Oracle Abex without having any coding skills before. <clears throat> Currently, we explaining the, the architecture for the Oracle Service Cloud infrastructure to understand what is the component for Oracle Apex. Uh, as we see in, uh, in the slide that Oracle Apex, it's an application that is deployed on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI. And uh, Oracle Apex or, uh, containing three main components. The first component is the Oracle Autonomous Database, which, which will be used to store the Apex data, uh, the transaction tables, uh, the second component will be used uh, is related to the Oracle Manage Apex uh, development functionality that in this component enable different types of users uh, without relying on the IT department to easily develop and design the, re the required report and the required forms uh, very easily without having any codes uh, skills before. The third component uh, included into our Oracle Apex platform is the managed tier, uh, middle, middle tier, which is web interface that enable the different types of user to connect to the database, uh, autonomous database, and connect to the Apex, uh, man Oracle managed Apex, uh, through web browser to start uh, writing SQL query using the web interface that connected to the auto Oracle autonomous database and start developing the application using web interface portal. So this is the, these are the three main components for uh, Oracle Apex on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. 
when we go to for uh, transforming uh, the spreadsheet data into web application into minutes, uh, I would like to highlight first here that in traditional methodology for developing applications, web application based on a spreadsheet, uh, the old development schooling in this area uh, require lots of manual configuration, uh, lots of manual development. For example, if I want to build web application based on CSV file or Excel sheet, so this is required to define or use ODBC connection or GDBC connection. If it is required to develop new form, I must develop this form manual. If, uh, if I am asked for to design new report, so this means that I must de design and develop this report manually. So the old fashion for uh, developing the application uh, containing lots of manual configuration, manual development, so it takes lots of time to finalize your application at the end. But when using Oracle Apex, it's very easy just to, to drag and drop uh, the spreadsheet files into the Oracle uh, Cloud uh, Apex services. And uh, based on the functionality for the autonomous Oracle database, uh, it will auto-generate the target table that will host the tables automatically. No need to create the table manually before. Uh, automatic uploading for the data from for uh, from the spreadsheet and automatically creating all the reports, automatically creating all the graphs, or, or automatically creating all forms based on the uploaded data automatically using machine learning and artificial intelligence functionality. So based on transforming a spreadsheet into an application in minutes, it can be delivered very easily using Oracle Apex. After that, we can share uh, we can share the the URL to, for for different types of users to access this uh, application uh, very easily without any manual configuration required to be done. So this is I'm focusing here also that the main functionality for Oracle Apex is auto generating auto developing the the forms and the report based on the uploaded data automatically using machine learning and artificial intelligence functionality. So if we go to the advantage uh, for Apex or how to position Apex as a de development framework, uh, we can say that it, it facilitated, uh, facilitated the development life cycle uh, in today's uh, instead of weeks and the months and years to develop one application. Uh, it's very easy, uh, easy to, uh, to adapt to any changes required uh, from the business perspective uh, to add this enhance it in the Oracle Apex. Uh, you can develop the application from A to Z without any coding skills before, low code to build the, the, the application. So we suggest the Oracle Apex not only for software developers, we support it also for different line of business users to without relying on the IT to develop the application very fast. <clears throat> Second, we are talking about sample application included inside Apex. This is uh, one of the powerful feature included in, in, uh, inside Oracle Apex uh, services. It contains pre-built uh, sample application for different types of business, uh, such as uh, team calendar, custom tracking, project management, uh, minutes of meetings, uh, time sheets, so uh, Oracle Apex provide this sample application. So we can use this sample application in advance as a starting point for developing our application and uh, starting executing some uh, customization based on the requirement on our side. And <clears throat> so we can save lots of time to develop this application by using the Apex samples uh, included inside uh, Apex service platform itself. If we talk about the, the output for the application delivered by, developed by Apex, uh, we can say that uh, Oracle Apex can uh, uh, provide different interfaces, uh, even desktop applications or uh, web application. Also uh, provide the output uh, for any uh, smartphones and the devices. Uh, only one time development and the output will be auto-generated without no more customization, without any, any additional development tasks to be implemented. 
<coughs> if we can see, if we summarize the characteristics, uh, the main features and the characteristics of uh, Apex, uh, we can say that uh, it's a pre-built environment for development. Uh, no software required to be installed. Uh, it, no coding required from any types of business users working with the Apex environment. Uh, Oracle Apex prov provide different types of connections, so you can use different data sources for Oracle Apex. Uh, so it can connect it to different types of data, uh, to database, to ERP systems, to human capital management, uh, spreadsheet, flat files, and different other systems can be used as a data source for Oracle Apex. Uh, building the application is very easy. Uh, this is why, because Oracle Apex using the machine learning and artificial intelligence functionality that will be used automatically to auto rebuild the forms, auto rebuild, auto building, developing the reports based on the uploaded data uh, exactly. If we are saying that uh, uh, the value for Apex uh, for different types of users, we can say that. Oracle Apex is very useful not only for uh, software developer uh, to be used only. No, Oracle Apex is very easy to be used for different line of business users, such as the business analyst to fast uploading data from a spreadsheet, uh, uh, navigating the data, exploring the data very easily, uh, representing the data in uh, different layout formats, such as graph, tables. Uh, so. Uh, all business analysts without relying on the IT department can, uh, can use Apex 100% to self-develop and quickly deploy the application without relying on the IT department at all, even without having any good skills before. So here we came to the equation uh, that summarized the, the Apex service platform. That is combination between Oracle Apex and Oracle Autonomous Database. So Oracle Apex by this combination can use all features that is uh, included in Oracle Autonomous Database. So accordingly, uh, we increase the functionality for Oracle Apex by integrating it using Oracle Autonomous uh, Database. <clears throat> no configuration required. Uh, you can start your applications in very few minutes. You can develop your application from A to Z. Uh, no administration task because all the administration tasks is, is covered and implemented uh, inside the Oracle Autonomous Database for self-batching, self-upgrading, uh, self-troubleshooting, uh, self-tuning and performance issues. Uh, very short time to develop the application using Apex. <clears throat> uh, we can see that that Oracle Apex provide very good facility for the software developers uh, because it, it enabled the software developers and the business analyst user to be more focused on the business requirement for the application rather than focusing on the coding and the technical side for the platform itself. <clears throat> so for demonstrating Oracle Apex, we have uh, a good uh, business story. Uh, that's summarizing the information about uh, our projects and our tasks. So we need to demonstrate uh, a project and tasks activity inside our organization uh, according to the schedule per each task, how many projects do we have, how many tasks included in each project, uh, what is the schedule for each task, uh, uh, what is the status for the project and the task itself, uh, what is the workload between my team members, because I need to know uh, who is the owner for a specific tasks and who uh, have uh, who who owns low number of tasks. I need to uh, to analyze uh, the cost for each task according to the budget uh, estimated amount. So I need to list uh, the tasks that is exceeded the budget. I need to list the tasks that is under the budget. So this is the business our business story today. Uh, for uh, demonstrating Oracle uh, Apex platform. So now I'm going to uh, connecting to the demonstration platform. Uh, here we can see this is uh, the workshop that we are going through for today. Uh, it contains some exercises 
uh, it start with uh, gets getting started with uh, Oracle Apex service uh, and uh, enable me, enable us to request uh, or uh, acquire the Oracle Apex uh, service platform uh, and how to prepare this environment. Uh, we have thoughts in our mind. Uh, how long does it take to build this environment? Uh, how much of the installation will go on? Uh, it's very easy uh, to implement it on the cloud. Then the second, the second part will uh, start to working with uh, the application, how to develop the application to evaluate how much uh, uh, Oracle Apex is easy to be used or not, and how to upload the data from a spreadsheet data. So here I am going to Oracle uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console, uh, because Oracle Apex is a platform deployed on OCI, so I'm connecting to the Oracle OCI console now, and I'm connecting to the Oracle account name. Here I am providing the uh, identity provider that will be used for the single sign-on. Here, I'm going to, to connect using my account. Uh, because this is my account that owns the, this tenancy. But you can have your own free account uh, by registering free account on uh, Oracle uh, OCI uh, console and uh, providing all your connection details, uh, your visa information. Uh, then, uh, just for registration. After that, once you request from Oracle to upgrade uh, to the tenancy after the free trial period, uh, the deduction will be uh, executed from your account. So here. Once you're connected to the Oracle uh, cloud uh, infrastructure, this is the home page that, uh, that show all the services provided on Oracle Cloud. Uh, now I'm focusing only on Oracle Apex uh, services. So what I'm going now, so I need to uh, request or provisioning, uh, doing provisioning for Oracle Apex platform environment to start developing my application. So from the, drop down, uh, from the menu here, we can see ID, uh, developer and uh, services. Here we can see Apex instance. Now I'm going to request Apex instance from Oracle Cloud. After finishing the provisioning for the Oracle uh, instance, I will have a complete Apex uh, framework development environment on cloud containing the Oracle Autonomous database, uh, containing the Oracle Apex workspace uh, that will be used to develop the application, containing the middle tier uh, that enables the business users to connect through the web uh, to the Oracle Autonomous Database and run a web SQL uh, portal. So can the end user can run SQL query against the database and start building the application. So here, once requesting the Oracle Apex in instance, I will create now the three components for Oracle Apex on uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Here, I am... Uh, uh, the, the most important point that we need to focus here, once connecting the two, before creating the Apex in instance, we need to verify the region to, to specify which region you want to host your uh, Oracle Apex uh, services. Currently, I'm using in Australia and Melbourne. And also, I must select which compartment uh, will be used to store the Apex uh, uh, framework uh, service. So currently what I'm going to do, I, I will create the, the three components for Apex services. Click Create Apex Services. It shows here the, the compartment name. And this is the display name for my Apex platform. So I will give it a name, uh, Apex Demo Workshop. And for the database name for the autonomous transaction processing database that will be created with the Apex environment, I will give it into the same name. And here I can allocate the resources for the my tenancy for my the, for the cloud, uh, choosing the database version, 
uh, choosing how many Oracle Compute Unit uh, count will be used, uh, what is the storage for uh, the storage allocation uh, for the autonomous database. I'm, collect, I'm allocating one uh, Oracle Compute Unit and one terabyte for the data. And here, uh, Oracle Cloud asking me to provide the uh, default uh, administrator cr credential for the, autonom for the autonomous uh, uh, database. This is a default user admin. I will provide the, the password. And here, uh, secure uh, choosing the access type for this environment, keep it to the default for the secure access from anywhere, not only private access. I need to, I need to enable all types of user to access the environment anywhere uh, from inside or your organization network or from outside. Then I will start to create Epic service. Now, in just a few minutes, two minutes maximum, the three components for the Oracle Epic service platform. The first component is Oracle Autonomous Database. The second component is uh, Oracle Apex Development Environment. The third component is uh, uh, Oracle Apex middle, uh, middle Tier. These three components are going to be provisioned now. Just in two minutes, it will be finished. So preparing the environment, installing the environment, creating the, Epic, the autonomous database will be done in a very short time. Now, can you see this is the status is available now after creating the, 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 uh, the three main component for Oracle Apex uh, uh, framework. Uh, the, the environment now is available. And here you can see here uh, in the top menu, we can have launch Apex, launch database action, and some actions that can be done against the database. So this is representing the middle, the middle tier component. Uh, that enable uh, connecting to the database. So when launching the database action, for example, I will connect now to the database using the default user admin. And the, the password that is defined, welcome at 12345. This is my passport, my password. Then sign in. Now I'm connecting to uh, using the middle uh, tier, this middle tier component to connect to the first component for Apex, which is Oracle Autonomous Transaction Database. And here, this is all the feature that is included. I can run data load. Uh, I can run JSON command, create uh, REST APIs, uh, running SQL command, running the data modeler to, to design the ERD diagram. So let's try the SQL. Now I am connecting to the database and here list of all schemas. And this is the default username with admin privilege. And this is list of all database objects. So using this web browser, the all types of user can connect remotely. Uh, no need to install any local uh, SQL developer or something to connect and write queries against the database. So this is the first component. Uh, the second component here, we have launch in Apex. Uh, this is the second uh, middle, uh, middle tier component that enable you to connect to the Apex development environment to start to develop the application, the forms, uh, the report, uh, the charts. But what, before launching the Apex, if we try to launch the Apex now, Apex require us to create Apex workspace. What does Apex Workspace mean? Apex Workspace is a database schema uh, will be created inside the autonomous database 
to to store all the information, all the metadata information about the project that you create, about the forms that you develop, about that about the workspaces that you create. So inside the the framework for the Apex uh, platform, you can create different workspaces and assign each workspace to different types of user on your organization. So here for the first time, I have two options here. Uh, by default, connecting uh, to the administration service. And can you see here this link work, uh, workspace sign in. Uh, if I click uh, workspace sign in, it gives different login information to provide the workspace information. But currently I didn't create any workspace at all. So what I'm going, I'm going to the administration service, connecting with using the admin user with the password. This is a password. And I start in the administration service to create my, for, my first workspace inside. Here, he asking to create workspace. Can you see here the user? I'm connecting using the, the user admin. And here, this is the first workspace in my tenancy for uh, Apex uh, framework. So creating workspace. This is the workspace, Apex demo. WS. This is the database user, and this is the workspace name. By default, when creating the workspace, two action will be created. A database schema will be created inside the autonomous database name, which is using this name. And the workspace name, by default, created using the same name. But I can give different workspace name. And this is the password. for the database name, for the database schema, and the password for the workspace, Apex demo workspace. Now, currently I'm creating workspace. So here, this is in the admin uh, administration console. We can see list of workspaces that we have, manage workspaces, uh, click on manage workspaces, for example. So this is workspace details. If I want to create another workspace or remove one, look any specific workspace to prevent connect, connecting to this one. So this is, I, I need to get list of workspaces on my site. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do, I'm going to the Oracle Apex console again. But here I am I'm not going to connecting to the, uh, the administration service. I switch connection to the workspace itself. So this is the workspace name. This is a password. And this is, uh, sorry, this is the workspace. And this is the username. And this is the password. Sign in. Now I'm connecting to the second component uh, for Oracle uh, Apex uh, platform services. Uh, the main purpose here in this console is to start developing the application. Uh, started developing the forms, the, the, started developing your own dashboard, your graphs. So now uh, the first step to start developing the application here uh, in this menu, uh, application builder, I will start to create new application from scratch. Also, I can install the sample application that is uh, uh, built in with Apex platform and the download this sample application here. But here I'm going to use uh, a new sample application, create new application from scratch. <coughs> here, Oracle Apex asking me what is uh, the source for this application, new application from existing database or uh, from uh, uh, spreadsheet files. 
So here I'm going to, to select from a file to demonstrate how to build the application in minutes uh, for uh, using a spreadsheet files. So I'm going to use from file. Here I have two options. Uh, Apex asking me where is the source for this file. So here I can browse upload files and navigate to the directory where my files is located. So here, uh, this is uh, my folder, my work. This is the source file. So this is the source file. And I need to open this data first. So this is the sample data of the file containing project name, task name, the start date, the end date for each task, what is the status for each task, uh, who is the owner assigned to each owner, what is the cost for this task, and what is the, the allocated budget for this task. So this is a sample story for the data that we have. So if you have this uh, file on your local hard disk, so you can browse it like this. Another option provided uh, inside Oracle Apex, instead of uploading the file from the local file system, you can use the sample data provided using Apex. So here I'm using project and tasks. This is a built-in sample uh, source file provided. So I will use this one. <clears throat> Once selecting the sample data uh, provided uh, by Oracle Apex, uh, it display open the data in this editor like this, just for display only. Then click next. Oracle Apex asking me where you want to upload this data, in which table. I have two options. If I have predefined existing table created in the autonomous database, I can provide the table name here or choose it from this list. But currently I don't have any table, so I give it, I will create new table named project underscore task. <clears throat> and click load data. So Oracle Apex will use the machine learning functionality now to auto create the table and auto populating the table with data using this CSV file. So now uh, the, the data load, uh, and the creation for the target table in the autonomous database is done and the containing the table uh, containing seven three rows. So I need to, to check uh, the data in the table in a visual format. So I click here, view table. <coughs> so this is a structure for the table, the uh, providing table name data types. I can also add more functionality to add column, modify column, rename one of this column, applying any calculation, truncating column. Uh, and I need to, sum, to check the data. So this is the data that is uploaded into the table now. So now I need, uh, I verify the data. I, I am sure that the data is uploaded uh, correctly. No missing rows exist. So I want to start to create the application based on this data automatically. So can you see here on the right side, there is a button named create application. So once you're clicking on this, what will happen? I will ask to create application. What is running at the back end now? Uh, Oracle Apex use the machine learning functionality and the artificial intelligence functions to understand the, the, the uploaded data very well. And based on this data, uh, Oracle Apex recommending, recommending providing uh, auto created pages and the forms and the dashboard automatically. So I have a home page automatically created. I have dashboard containing some graphs information based on the uploaded data uh, automatically. I have a form to, uh, to, to, to search for a specific task. Uh, I have a form to, to search for a specific uh, project as a report. I have a calendar automatically created. So all these pages automatically created and I will provide this project name as a project task. Also here, there is some feature included uh, for Oracle uh, Apex. So I will check this option to include all these feature uh, for, active, uh, for active reporting, for access control, for uh, specific types of data, uh, for about home page. Then, so this, this information, this form, is, this uh, feature, will be included into this database schema inside this workspace. So now I am just clicking create application. The application will be created 
without any manual interferer, without any manual development required, without any manual verification for the uploaded data. So now I am running, uh, creating the application now in just a minutes. Can you see all these pages are being created automatically? Then I'm running, run the application, then providing, uh, when running the application, uh, uh, it's asking me about the username and the password. This is the username and the password for the workspace name that is storing this application. It's not the username and the password for connecting to your tenancy on, on, on OCI. So remember username and sign in. Can you see the home page is auto created? We have dashboard automatically created. Once clicking on this one, the dashboard, can you see we have four graphs representing or giving a business meaning for the data uploaded into uh, the spreadsheet. Uh, no one developed these graphs manually. Uh, the artificial intelligence and the machine learning functionality inside uh, Oracle Apex auto-generated this and auto-developed, auto-designed these, these graphs based on the uploaded data just by running drag and drop functionality. So here, this is uh, the first report. This is list of all projects and the tasks for each project. So for example, this project containing four tasks, this project containing uh, 10 tasks. This is list of all tasks, bare details for each report, uh, bare each project. Uh, this is a report representing the owner, uh, the workload for the business users and the owners. So we can see that John uh, having 14 tasks to be done. Uh, we have uh, Ross here, he has two tasks only. And uh, this is number of the project according to the status closed. I have uh, 29 projects closed. Uh, for the open one, I, I have 16 one. Uh, for the bending one, I have 17. So this dashboard is auto-developed from scratch uh, using Oracle Apex. No need to develop everything manually. When I go back to the home page again, I can uh, connect to project search, uh, task search, for example. Can you see this form? These filters, this criteria, this prompt is auto generated based on the uploaded data automatically. Uh, I can play with these filters to, to, to search for a specific project. Also, I need to check. Uh, uh, the project owned by uh, John and the Mark and Scott, uh, James only. Uh, I need to check the status for the project is closed. This is list. So all these forms are being developed automatically. Once dragging and dropping the, the spreadsheet inside the uh, Apex platform, no, no manual development at all. So here, Suppose that I, I need, after auto-developing this form, suppose that I need to do some manual customization. It's available. It's very easy to be done. Suppose that the status uh, filter, I need to change it to radio group instead of red uh, checkbox like this. I need to move it up to, to position it in a good position inside the layout, uh, in the, inside this panel. So what we can do here, just click edit page three. I'm going to, uh, uh, to connect it to the design mode now. In the design mode uh, window, it's containing three, three parts. The, the, the left side panel that containing the component that you use on your fork. The second one uh, containing the, uh, uh, the layout page and the right side containing the property for each component. So for example, for the status, I need to drag it up to, to position it uh, uh, under project, then click save, click run. Can you see the status moved up 
behind the project, I need to change it to radio group instead of check boxes. So what I'm doing, edit, and go to the status. On the property side, uh, property palette, can you see that we have property named radio group uh, and click save. Just simple click, I can do any customization, no need to write any manual code at all. So can you see here, it's, it's changed to radio group. I need to check the open uh, project for only. Uh, now it's a filter, auto filter using the open. Uh, if I want to, to, to display the other values also, I can click clear here and the other values is representing again. I, I want to keep these values permanent uh, and avoid auto hide action that, hap that, that is happening here. I can do edit and go to the, uh, the, the item for status. Can you see here list of values? I, I zero count entry, change it, show last. So now I can get the bending tasks, uh, the on hold. I need uh, the open projects. I need to, to check the closed project. So now it's very simple uh, using the UI interface with the component provided using Oracle Apex to, to auto develop and even doing any small customization based on the change of the requirement of the business requirement. Also here, if you click on the project, can you see uh, provide graph report auto generated, not manually developed. I can change the type of this report like this. Uh, I need to check the status also. <coughs> Clear. This is list of all uh, number of project according to the status. I have 16 open project in now. I have 29 uh, closed project. I have. 11 project on hold. So uh, assign it to, uh, I, this is auto-generated graph based on the owner. I need to check John and uh, hands, bum, and the mark on. So I can filter all, also the, the graph based on uh, the legend information provided uh, at the bottom of the graph. So if I want to check the cost, this is a range of costs, the project that costs uh, tasks costs uh, less than 100. This is uh, the tasks that costs uh, the amount between 100 to, uh, till 200. So just simple drag and drop uh, for the, uh, the worksheet into Oracle Cloud Platform. The machine learning functionality will auto develop the, the, the forms, auto develop the reports automatically uh, without the need for doing any manual, uh, any manual, uh, any manual development. So here, this is list of project information. I can edit it. I can change the value for this one. Uh, yeah, this is the detailed information. I can delete it. Also, I can click create here to create new project. Project one, task name, task one, for example, a start date. It will start on. Uh, 22, it will finish on 30. The status uh, is open. Assign it to uh, Ashraf Hussein at oracle.com. The cost is 1,000 and uh, the budget is 1,200, then create. So now the new project is auto-created. No need to develop any custom or any manual uh, application in no, no manual interferer at all, just a drag and drop and the Oracle Cloud will auto-generate everything from, from scratch with no coding at all. Currently, I, uh, I completed, finished with my part and uh, she, yani, giving the control to my colleague, Yan. She will continue with the second part of the demonstration. So Yan, would you please uh, take control, share your screen? Uh, yes, please, I share first. Okay, I stop sharing okay. my screen. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. Okay, so okay. So I actually having a same uh, environment uh, as uh, the lab. 
that uh, Ashraf is doing. Wait, uh. Okay, so now we actually have a project task report. So this is all the uh, uh, spreadsheet data that have been uploaded. Okay, uh, so you uh, you will you were able to gain an uh, insight into the ability of the interactive report. Just like what Astra showed uh, previously, we actually can uh, create and insert the, the record uh, from this uh, form, okay? From the form that we already been created. So beside that, we actually have more functions inside this interactive report. Uh, first, we, I would like to show is like, okay, we we were able to provide a like better view for the end users. Let's say we want to have a control uh, break. Okay, let's say here, we want to, to show it into the control break, break by the project. So once we click control break, right? So the, the, the record will be uh, into a layout based on the project, like each client servers conversions project, what kind of task actually is inside so you were able to break it uh, accordingly and then let's say that uh, I don't want I want to know that uh, uh, who I want to know that uh, uh, I want to have a better view based on the the users the assigned users okay so from here you can see that okay uh, the the project that's uh, have been uh, assigned to hang is like okay uh, what kind of task actually inside there? So what kind of uh, uh, project is there? What kind of tasks actually have been uh, have been created? Yeah, like, okay, James, you, he have more than one project that's on his hand, okay? So uh, maybe the, the your finance department were thinking, okay, uh, each of the project, we already have budget uh, that have been uh, allocated and then maybe the cost that have been used up uh, I don't know what is the difference, whether the budget that we actually put in and the cost that actually use up for the project, is that uh, enough or, or less than that? So actually we can do a compute, okay? So let's say I do a compute. I want to know that uh, uh, the, the budget VS the, is a VS the cost, okay? So I would like to show it into in the dollar signs. So uh, I want to know that the, the 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 budget that I allocate minus the minus my cost. So I will know that uh, whether the budget allocated is enough for each of the project or not. Okay. So once I done, I just click on apply. Very fast, you can see that a, a, a budget VS uh, cost uh, column have been created. Yeah, so you can see that some of the project uh, we actually uh, put uh, more budget on it, but actually the the to use up the cost is uh, is only hundred, right? But like this uh, project, so actually we uh, the budget only is a like hundred, but it's already exceed the budget already. Okay. So it actually provide a, a compute uh, for, for, the, for the end users. So if you think that um, this is not enough, I, uh, I want to know right uh, the total uh, over budget or whether I, I allocate uh, less budget on it, right? So I want to know that what is the deep, what is my uh, asset, okay? So we can uh, do an aggregate on it. So from the data, we can do the aggregate. Okay, say that oh, I want to sum up the, the, the budget VS cost, and then we click apply on it. Okay, what will happen? You were able to see the end of the budget VS things, right? So this means we actually uh, have been allocated uh, exceeding 70,000 uh, uh, monies into the project that we actually run in our company and then we, we actually have this, this, uh, this uh, amount of cash flow, okay? So uh, 
But the, the, the management said, oh, you asked me to go in through this table and look into it. It's so difficult. I want to, I, I prefer to look into the chat. So what we can do? So we can go to the action here, click on chat. Okay. So let's say we want to label it uh, as a um, project. And then the value we'll be choosing is the budget VS uh, cost, okay? And then the function, I want to have a sum, exceeding, exceeding value, plus I want it to be in the horizontal view, apply. Then you can see that, okay, what project actually uh, have been, oh, sorry. What project actually uh, the, the value is like the budget that we allocate is not enough. Uh, what is like what is the project that we already allocate too much of budget compared with the cost? So the 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 finance department can be just have a glance of view on uh, through the chart, they will see that uh, what kind of project actually uh, actually uh, have been have been run exceed the budget already yeah easily through the the chart view so all this thing is can be done uh during the interactive report okay so um we also can uh sort the report uh based on the sorting okay so let's say i want to sort uh not only for one field, we want to sort more than one, one column. So I want to sort, let's say, uh, I want to start with the um, start date uh, and the end date, afterward followed by the end date. And then if let's say those that is a uh, non-setting, then I want it to be like the, always the last, put at the last. So they will just apply. So the table was sort accordingly, like, okay, the project that had been start you know, earlier and then afterward will follow by the, the, the end date time. So you can see that, okay, uh, those that already start with the Zoom uh, is already done. So uh, what is still on hold? Oh, this is the old project is still on hold. Yeah. So after you create all these things and then uh, ready all this report and chart, uh, you want, how you going to like passing down to, to the people to actually uh, have a same view, right? Because after you, you do the modification already, you want it to be shared to uh, all the people there, right? So to save the report, you can just click on here, go to report and save report. Okay, but uh, for, for you to see that it's like, okay, if you are, you are the developer, you were able to save it as a default report setting. But for other users, they only can save it as a normal report and whether into the public or private view only. Okay, so this means each of the end users, they can be uh, customize their own report uh, accordingly and they only view by themselves or they can, they, they can save it as a public report and then uh, let others also use their report. So, but as you are the developer, you are able to save it as a default report. This means the, the, the primary report. Primary report only got one, but you can save it into a, a, a alternative report, say a budget, budget review. And then we click apply. So once we click on it already, so you will see that uh, each of the users, when they, they have uh, access to this report, right, you will have a primary report, which is the, the default setting. Yeah. Hey, my, my, my screen is a bit slow. or they can choose an uh, alternative report, okay? So this is a primary report and then the alternative report so that they can choose. Okay, this is a primary report, okay? 
So uh, to, to, to edit the record, right, we actually are working with the form, okay? So the form is, uh, when you click on this one, this is the form that you can, you can key in new record and change the, the, the data inside the, each of the record. So uh, when you are a developer, you were able to see this developer bar uh, down here will allow you to change the, the, the view of the form, okay? Let's say uh, I want to put this close, instead I put the, the text in, okay? I want, to, I want to make it as a uh, different view, okay? How come I think this is... Okay, sorry. Okay. So we are having the same thing. This is a report. Then let's say here, I want to uh, change the view of my form, right? Because this one is the prompt up, then you will be showing edit patch five. But if I close this one, this is the, the, the page of the interactive report. It will be in the page five, page four. So to edit this page, I just click on edit page five. You will go to the page de design. So to, to, to change the view, I maybe I want to have a start date and the end date at the same row. I just drag and drop. Where is my this? Uh oh, okay, here. So I want the, the start and end that at the same row. So I just drag and drop the, 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 the things. And then I just save it and run. So when I go to my page, Okay, I close this. When I open again, you will see that the start and end that will be in the same row already. Okay. So if let's say I want to change the status uh, to the select list instead of the um, Instead of uh, we have to let the end users to key in uh, instead of the key in wrongly, you no, know? or like if let's say the the end users come to the course and type in the name, they they try to like uh, this to to make mess into the data. Actually, they are not allowed because uh, validations actually working uh, at the back to actually do the checking uh, is to make sure the correct data type is been key into the data, okay? So this one is like, I, I don't think you were able to, to do it in the spreadsheet, right? So this thing uh, in the form, uh, you can better uh, control it. Okay, so if let's say I key in correctly, uh, nothing wrong. So if let's say I want to change this uh, status to the, to the select list, right? So I can easily go to the edit page, so instead of uh, thing I want to change is the status. Instead of text field, I want to change it to the select list. Okay. So uh, label is status. And then I want it the list of value. So I can change it to the SQL query. I can take the, put in my, uh, SQL uh, a query statement, say status D, status R uh, from project task. Okay, order by what? Okay, so I can validate my SQL query whether it's correct. Okay, green is correct. Okay, let's say I simply change my table name to uh, task at the S. Okay, once I done, 
I check right, okay. You see, when I expand this one, it will help you to show you that, okay, actually in the, uh, there is some error inside the things. Okay, if let's say I put it into the by row, right? You can see that you will be, you will be checking and tell you that, okay, there is the right to having problem. So I check the right to, oh, how that is the task. I actually adding one, one S there. So you were able to help you to validate the things. Okay, we click on validate. Is it having problem? Okay, my internet having problem. Sorry. Sorry, my internet is something wrong. Give me a minute. Okay, the page first. Maybe my uh, my line is a bit slow. Oh. Okay, yeah. So we do it again. This function is quite as very builders. Okay. Okay, is this is the 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 page. So we have to go to the uh, status here to select the list. Sorry, we have to do it again because my, uh, my line having issue. So we put in select uh, this thing status D so that uh, only the one, uh, one same status will be appear from project pass. Order by one. Okay. So you see everything is green already. We even though can come here to uh, click on this thing to check my 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 SQL query whether it's correct. Once it's correct, then we can save and run. Okay. So we once we run already. Okay, we go back to this thing to run the my applications. Okay, once we come back here, when we click on the form, the status become a select list instead of the end user have to key in. Okay, so you can uh, play around like I can uh, remove the the. The, the empty things uh, status, okay, empty validation, okay, here, right, I want, I don't want them to display the none value, okay, I just click, deselect it and save it, okay, once come back here, click on this one, you see, the none value is uh, removed already, this means empty already. So this is some um, function and features in the, the, the interactive report. So now we will be moving to the calendar. As, uh, as we know that in the report itself, right, it's already come with a, a start date and end date, okay? So actually in this interactive report, we have uh, much more uh, uh, functions that we can play around, uh, excluding the charge and the format kind of things, right? We actually can download the, the, the report into the Excel file or whatever things. And then uh, if you want to know that all the functions, including here, you can simply click on this help button. It will give you all the descriptions and the help uh, needed to actually uh, using the the, the functions inside uh, this interactive report, okay? So uh, last, we will come to the calendar, okay? So from the calendar, we can see that the project and the start that have been, have been, have been marked into the calendar. You can, you can using this arrow key to actually uh, go to the last month and the uh, future months, uh, uh, what kind of project uh, have been start, 
uh, what kind of tasks have been uh, uh, have been put into that that to be started. Okay, so uh, beside uh, looking into this uh, report, uh, we actually can do some uh, customizations uh, into this calendar page. Uh, first one is like uh, we can easily just go to the page design, uh, going through this edit page six. Okay, instead of the, we just highlight the calendar. This is the content. Okay, and then you just go to the attribute. Uh, instead of we showing the, the, the column into a project and uh, I want to show it into the task name instead of the project name. And then I want not only the start date, I want it extend to the, until the end date. Okay, and then uh, just save it. And run. Then you can see that each of the tasks from the start date till the end date will be highlighted. So maybe you will feel that, oh, it's too messy for me. I, I, I don't want all these things. Then you can just come here, just disable this part. Then everything will back to the start date only. Yeah, it will back to the start that and the task name will be displayed instead of the project name. Okay, so then we will see what we can do. Okay, what about uh, after we putting in the calendar, only the task name or the project name is displayed, but I want to have a detailed view of the of the of the task each task that putting into the calendar. What we're going to do? We can actually link it to the uh, another form page. So how we can do it to to link it with uh, uh, another page uh, is uh, very easy. You just go to the page design, highlight the calendar. Okay, uh, instead of uh, this thing, so the primary column we will just put the ID. Then we will just go to the link attribute, then we go for the link. You can see that link, okay? So we can add the link, like um, I'm going to put it like uh, create, then I want it to show the each of the project tasks, okay? Project task form, okay? The value that I want to pass it over, I think unit one is the project ID, right? So we will put it, the value is equal to the ID, okay? And then we click OK. Once we done, we just save it. When we click Run, the calendar itself, right? Instead of the task name and the, the, the start date, right? When we click on the, the, the task name, Everything regarding this task, like the project name, the start date, end date, uh, the status, the detail, everything will be displayed. So you can change. Like now, this one is like uh, August seconds. I I want I, I don't want it to be start that early. I want it to start this uh, the Friday. So I just change it and apply. So you will be going to the Friday already. So. Instead of like uh, look at the calendar information, we can actually edit it by uh, create the link uh, to embed it into the calendar. Okay, so I think uh, that's all for today demo. Astra, uh, pass it back to you. Yes, thanks, Sian, very much for uh, for your uh, demonstration and. Uh, Last point on my side that I am going to share this documentation. Uh, this is a complete reference for Oracle Apex documentation, uh, the, the latest release for the tutorial uh, videos, communities, and white papers. So, so if you have any questions, you are most welcome now. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A box to be answered.
would you like me to, I can read them out. So the first question is, can we use the, can we use Apex to load data from spreadsheet to the mainframe tables? Uh, from a spreadsheet to mainframe tables? Yeah. Do you mean that uh, you, you want to, to, uh, to use the Oracle Apex uh, as an integration tool to, to move data from source to target? Yes. So what if I see if Saski is still on, um, he might they might be able to elaborate on that a bit more. Whilst we wait for the that extended on that, um, we have another question. Is it possible to further break each category into a subcategory? Yes, we can create uh, different levels of breakings. Okay. Uh, another question. Is it possible to enforce columns editable by end user on the report page? Yes, the end user can uh, customize uh, the visualization for, uh, for the naming for the uh, columns. Uh, in his view, yes, can be. Okay. Um, we have a bit more to the, um, from um, Sakshi in the question. Uh, yes, they would like to integrate it with the mainframe database for loading. Uh, currently, uh, Oracle Apex is not used as an integration tool, so can't uh, use it to move data to, from a spreadsheet to mainframe. Uh, this can be done using different technologies such as Oracle Data Integrator or Oracle Integration Cloud. Okay, another question here. Can we achieve Calc Manager functionality in Apex? What do you mean with Calc Manager functionality? So if it's, I could ask, uh, provide a bit more detail on that, then we can answer that yes. fully. Yeah. Um, we have another question. If, if we create with multiple tables, oh, Yang Ping is answering that, and update after creating the app. Okay. Um, so there's a question here. I have to download a huge 10 gigabyte from a SaaS application and insert into a template in ATP then filter the data into the base table and build a report on top of it. How, how, can, however, how can we directly configure an application to download or call API to download into the table? Uh, yes, actually Oracle Apex uh, can integrate with uh, APIs or uh, web services uh, calling uh, external procedures so we can integrate using this one. Okay. So we just have um, that one question. I'm just waiting for AJ to expand on it. Um, are there any other questions that anybody has following this workshop? Okay, uh, AJ, what we'll do is we'll get back to you directly on that question. If you'd like to um, contact us in the emails that come through to you, we'll get the information over to you following the event. So if there are no more questions today, we'd like to thank you for your time and your question. Oh, one more has come in. Any tutorial? Oh, there you go. I'm sure if you're replying to that one. Okay. Oh, any tutorial or link using APIs? Yes, yeah. this uh, tutorial is provided in a complete uh, reference document that I provided in the presentation. You can find it. So we will share all of this documentation with you in the follow-up that comes out um, following the event, which will include the recording. Okay. All right. I think we've covered most of them. Again, thank you, everybody, for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Okay.
thank you very much for all the attendees and for your valuable questions. Uh, we are looking for hearing from you for anything related to Apex. Thank you very much. Thank you.